Hello, welcome to our special coverage of the COVID-19 pandemic. My name is Vivian Kai Loko. This show brings you up to date on the pandemic. We don't just look at Ghana, we look at the global scene as well. In a bit, I'll introduce to you the gentleman I'll be having today's discussion with. Stay with us, don't go away. Yeah, welcome back to a special coverage of the COVID-19 pandemic. My name is Vivian Kai Loko. Let me introduce to you the two gentlemen I'll be having today's discussion with. I have Selam Adonu. He's the head of features and articles here at City FM and City TV. Selam, welcome. Thank you, Vivian. I also have with me Goffred Akoto Wafu. He's the head of current affairs here at City FM and City TV. Godfrey, welcome. Oh, it's a pleasure, Vivian. Great. So, gentlemen, if we can, we can look at the global stage, America, Europe, Africa, and then we'll come to Ghana. Okay, so quickly, not too much happening, I must admit. Uh, so let me start from Africa uh, on some of the situations that are currently ongoing on the continent with regards to the corona. Um, virus okay. and I will start from South Africa where there's been an interesting uh, court proceeding Vivian mm -hmm. so uh, as South Africa court has ruled that part of the lockdown regulations are unconstitutional and oh, wow. invalid so a group went to court mm -hmm. and challenged the government's response announced by President Cyril Marama Posa. Now, the High Court in Pretoria ruled that the regulations are not rationally connected to the objectives of slowing the rate of infection or limiting the spread thereof. Now, this is informative <laughs> because it is very likely that in Ghana we will have a legal suit because against the, on the worship, yeah, no, on the worship, on the, on the, the worship yeah. matter because there are those in, and Salom is here, a lawyer, uh, <laughs> there are those in the legal space who mm -hmm. say that no part of the Constitution dictates that the president can tell people how to worship so the closing and the opening is fine but the how but he doesn't when, have powers to yeah do but that. when it's not normal times and there's a pandemic that's a health well, issue the, the law is the law so, so, so for example I mean, <laughs> so, there's, so there's, there's, the laying of the hands and do, uh, so, so these are forms of worship so for example <laughs> saying that don't dance in church yes. is part of how somebody it's the worship. Yeah. worship. Yeah. so so uh, it'll be interesting if it does go to court because well, there's a thing to be said for that mm. of course people on the other side will also say we are not in normal times there's uh, 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 there's a ban on many things uh, imposition of restriction at which takes away certain freedoms but essentially I mean you can the closure or opening of the churches yes you can do that but the mode of worship how prescribing how somebody should worship you know is a tricky one and it will be interesting to see what uh, the court oh, will say yes. when this matter finally <laughs> does go to court so and uh, yesterday there were a few whispers in certain quarters that uh, such an attempt would be made people want to test the law the law mm. because they feel that if they don't push this particular one perhaps it shows that we've granted the president too many powers but if if, and if, if, um, if health wise i mean if you dance or you sing shout at a certain volume all that it will lead to somebody picking so they are saying something. close the church and the mosque but once you say it is open you cannot tell them and for instance uh, one of the lawyers who is making this case yesterday in conversation uh, for instance said that it is the difficulty the Muslims are having now mm. for instance because they have to pray at specific times mm -hmm. per their doctrine yeah the regulations that are out do not deal with those you can't tell a Muslim to play at six to pray at six or seven or eight or nine but must they be at a mosque no, but it must be at, at a specific times. time Yes, see, which is fine. But, but you've you opened the mosque mm -hmm. as well. And so and you're looking at the numbers. Exactly. So it's an interesting situation. I'm just <laughs> telling you what is on the <laughs> horizon. <laughs> long <before>. Solo <laughs> and his friends. I think we can get into that at a point when we start the deal. Solo and his friends are, are up to they want to test the law. Well, so do not be surprised. Do not be surprised okay. if uh, we end up at the Supreme Court over this matter. 
And I'm told there are also some who may also go to the courts over the closure of the borders with regards to the EC registration one too. Because so, so, they yes. are stuck outside by mm -hmm. no fault, no of, fault of theirs. So, yes, but the interesting thing there is that the president says the borders were closed until further notice. Mm -hmm. He did not put a time to it. Yeah. So until further notice is open, he could say, okay, the borders should be open next week or next two weeks. Okay. And EC also hasn't begun its exercise yet. Okay. We are told towards the end of uh, June and they may finish somewhere towards the end of July. Okay. So it, it, so it's, a bit, yeah, so it's okay. a bit um, mm. relaxed or okay. it gives them some more time to see <laughs> what happens. But okay. we like our lawyers. They like testing the law. Now, if you go to Equatorial <laughs> Guinea as well, they have ordered the country World Health Organization director to leave. Her name is Trifoni Nkurunziza. What? And according to Equatorial Guinea, she has falsified numbers that are not theirs. They say her numbers are too high. <laughs> Don't tell you, it does not tell you with this. Sorry, Guinea yes. and Tanzania. So she's, she has been asked to leave. Okay. Now, if you go to the uh, Tanzania now, <laughs> the United States have issued a new travel alert, as mm -hmm. usual, and they are still saying there's a high risk of contracting coronavirus in the uh, commercial hub Come. Dar es Salaam. But what happened to the someone? You remember you said that yes. the, the yes. someone, some officials. He's still there. The, um, the, yeah. I think he was yes. someone to, yeah. but the only yeah. response he was that they have nothing else to add to what statement the ministry uh, has issued in, in okay. response to some yeah. of the things that they said. So, um, okay, so yeah, I think you yeah. were there on the advice you did. <laughs> on the advice, that. and then uh, there are a couple of countries that have been affected who are saying that um, a lot of health workers are recording a high number of uh, corona virus positive results okay. so i will take you around the world now outside of the continent and according to this more than 600 nurses worldwide have died from coronavirus 600 600 and this is coming from the international council of nurses which is the global mother body of all nurses and they're asking that governments should uh, protect nurses a bit better now if you also uh, move around a bit there is a, a new London-based coronavirus treatment trial that's launched this week, and it is going to test a formulation of ibuprofen, which is quite popular. A lot mm -hmm. of people know what that is, and see if it can treat one of the complications of coronavirus, which is the severe acute respiratory distress syndrome. Okay. They are going to see if they can target ibuprofen at that particular angle. So. Uh, we'll keep you updated on that one. Austria and Germany are also preparing to ease coronavirus travel restrictions, you know, next door neighbor. So it will be quite easy to do for them. And two medical journals have raised concerns over the data used in coronavirus studies, especially one that is related to hydroxy chloroquine. Mm. It's becoming quite contentious now. Now, one study in the Lancet, and those in the medical field will know, if you get published in the Lancet, that is as high as you can get okay. in medical publishing. Now, they have found that giving hydroxychloroquine or chloroquine to hospitalized coronavirus patients was linked to an increased rate of mortality mm. and serious heart rhythm complications. So, uh, that one is there. So, you can get onto their website and read uh, what exactly the outcome of that study is. So Vivian, okay. uh, this is a quick wrap-up of what is happening with All major right. headlines around okay. the world. Thank you. Hello. Yes, um, j just to take it off from where uh, Godfrey left it, um, a few other headlines. Um, in Sweden, if you recall, when it started, whilst Sweden's neighbours were, uh, were, were uh, placing bans and other restrictions on activities, Sweden I mean, adopted a very relaxed approach. They did not care about the lockdowns, etc., and asked people to go about their activities quite in a normal fashion. And now, uh, the country's chief epidemiolog epidemiologist is saying that they could have done better and that uh, their death numbers have been higher compared to their immediate neighbors. About 4,500 people have died in that country from the outbreak, which is a higher rate. Uh, mortality rate than people in Denmark, Norway, and Finland. And the criticism we hear has been growing over the government's decision not to impose lockdown measures as strictly as elsewhere in Europe. Also, the total deaths uh, occasioned by coronavirus has passed 380,000. We'll get into details of that in a bit. Germany uh, updates its travel ad advice and warns against trips to Britain. And they said they will continue to warn against non-essential 
travel to Britain while the UK remains uh, maintains its 14-day quarantine rule despite removing caps uh, for travel to the rest of uh, Europe. Brazil's death also uh, passed 30,000. And in terms of the economy, Lufthansa announces first quarter loss of 2.1 billion euros. Mm. Also, okay. air pollution in China returns to pre-pandemic levels. You know, uh, China suffered one of the, 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 the strictest forms of lockdown. So yeah. it means that factory, China is a factory of the world. Yeah. Their we'll factories were not working. And within that period, the, the atmosphere was clearer, etc. But now we are hearing that air pollution in that country has climbed back to pre-pandemic levels. And scientists say Europe may follow suit. A lot of Europe is still under some kind of partial lockdown. But they are projecting that they may start operations soon and the, 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 level, the pollution levels may also go up. There's an interesting incident or matter in Vietnam. They call uh, Vietnam hasn't recorded any deaths so far. Uh, there's an incident with a patient, they call patient 91, who is actually a British pilot and who works for the national airline in that country. Uh, initially, I mean, he was urgent, he was seriously ill in, in, in need of urgent care. And it was said that a 43-year-old um, needed uh, lung transport, uh, transplant. And <laughs> over 50 people in Vietnam offered themselves as potential lung donors. And we are hearing that his situation is improving and he may no longer require a lung transplant. So that's nice. quite some good news yeah. for the people in Vietnam. And they are very happy about that. Australia's economy is officially in recession, uh, they've said. And... Um, New Zealand has also gone 12 days without uh, any new case of corona uh, virus. Let me give you a few figures about what the situation has been around the globe. USA leads again with 1.88 million cases, uh, 108,000 deaths, and 646,000 recovered. Um, Brazil follows with 558 cases, 31,000 deaths. Russia follows. Spain, UK, Italy, India, Germany, Peru, Turkey, in that order. Also, for uh, the continent of Africa, South Africa still leads uh, with 35,812 5, 35, cases, 755 deaths, 18,313 recoveries. Egypt follows with 27,000. Nigeria now comes up. So Nigeria is beginning to play like the big boys. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, initially they, they were a bit down in terms of, I mean, on, on the log. And uh, a lot was attributed to the fact that they were not testing enough. And indeed, for a country of about 205 million people, they've tested just 65,000 times. And that is not encouraging. So Algeria comes in at number four, Ghana number five with 8,297 cases, Morocco, Cameroon, Sudan, Senegal, Guinea, Djibouti. DRC, Cote d'Ivoire, our neighbors to the west, uh, with 3,024 cases, 33 deaths, 1,501 recovery. So okay. generally, that's how the situation is being okay. around the world. Interesting, around the world. Okay, let's come to Ghana. Uh, look at our figures in terms of uh, cases, recoveries, and uh, deaths, and all that. Yes, so, Godfrey, do you have that? Um, so uh, our case count... Um, uh, in fact, we've not had a new. Yeah, uh, had an update. we've not had an update. We're due one tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow, mm. not today. We're not getting any Thursday. today. Thursday. No, but I thought it was daily these days. Um, no, the, 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 if there's a further explanation to one okay. issue, then, then they, they come on, right, on so the Monday and the Wednesday and Friday. I see. So let's pray tomorrow. <laughs> we don't get any new. <laughs> yeah, but the numbers jump. keep going up. Well, if you look at it now, the total case count as sat uh, 31st May. Mm. 8,297, 38 dead, uh, 17, sorry, 13 uh, in severe conditions, and three critical. Okay. Now, if you look at those 13 uh, and three critical, one person is on a ventilator. As at that time, uh, UGMC was dealing with four guys, three, Kolebu, three, Kumasi, three, 37 hospital, and two, and, and one in Ho. Now, from the testing, uh, total numbers tested during contact routine surveillance contact tracing stands at 153,056, and uh, those from the mandatory quarantine that is Prime Prime and Kuwait that's 231. Total number posted from that count is 35, as we 
already indicated. So uh, those are the numbers that we have uh, brought uh, in. Now, okay. on the deaths that were announced uh, previously, uh, number 37 was a 52-year-old female mm -hmm. with metastatic ovarian cancer and gastrointestinal bleeding reported at a hospital in Kumasi with respiratory symptoms. She was admitted as a suspected COVID-19, isolated and died after three days uh, on admission. Uh, 38 is a 64-year-old female, as well admitted with an initial diagnosis of congestive cardiac failure and bilateral pneumonia, later confirmed as COVID-19 positive. She died after two days of admission. So uh, you can add this to uh, Kujakutu's constant <laughs> fear of pe persons coming through the routine surveillance already at an advanced oh. stage of uh, the disease where it doesn't look like too much can be done for them okay. uh, so yeah that is where we are with our case count okay so um the the issue still runs around the religion and the school but i think today the education bit has um, taken mm -hmm. over uh, the religious concerns especially after the minister um, address some of the issues but the education issues yesterday the minister uh, did address some but it appears there are still some um, being raised by parents teachers and um, all bodies related in the sector so um, if we can let's start with education today okay. and and then we, we take it from there so there's quite some number of concerns from the PTAs um, uh, this morning or yesterday for example they are saying that so if we're saying those who go to boarding school plus the day students go to the boarding schools and there's no access to them from their parents we should now change the rules and allow mobile phones for these kids they must not be <laughs> sophisticated phones for them to you know do. because of course they understand that uh, you know we, we shouldn't uh, allow them to go there and then there also one reason is the care that the awards will receive because this this is you know a health issue and yeah. if i have to let my child leave home and go to a place to be taken care of with loads of other children i have to know how this child will be taken care of so we have that one as well and then of course um, we're told that if all the students return those who have health issues underlying health issues they are not allowed mm -hmm. to return what happens to those students you know if you have asthma all those things you cannot go back to school. What happens to you in terms of learning, in terms of your exams and all that? That issue has also popped up. And of course, the WASI, the exams uh, um, <laughs> that we have to write with member states, of course. I have a, an audio on WASI telling us what, what they've done so far and all that. But let's start no with yeah, access to kids and how we, 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 we should deal with that. Well, you see, um, Vivian, I think it's an issue of trust here. <laughs> and truth be told, a lot of, if you look at the kind of stories we report when it comes to students' deaths in senior high schools, most of them are avoidable. And it is also because sometimes a kid can be sick for two or three days and the parents would not have been informed yeah. that your child is even in the infirmary. Mm. And I, I'm sure that is what is leading to parents saying, we must find a way of contacting our kids so that as soon as the kids feel there is something wrong, instead of even contacting the school first, they will contact their parents yeah. because their parents are the ones who can apply the pressure. So it's simply a matter of trust. And also, perhaps that places the honors on the Ministry of Education and the schools in particular to put in place measures where the kids are actually monitored and taken care of properly. And as soon as somebody develops a condition, that kid is you know has a certain level of first aid available mm -hmm. to go through a certain process now i was very happy when one of the regulations that came through for the schools was that they should be networked with a hospital if all the school, secondary schools that are opening should immediately network themselves to a hospital where as soon as anything happens okay, you send the kid there. but once again the honor lies on the school okay. authorities and the truth is that for several years, school authorities have not done enough mm -hmm. to warrant the kind of parents, uh, the kind of trust that parents want to, they want parents to have in them as at now. 
especially with a pandemic like this because as we say in our local language no parent wants their child to call die what we call mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you understand mm -hmm. something that clearly can be avoidable yeah. simply because a teacher who was supposed to supervise a dormitory or a teacher was supposed to supervise a prep or something and has been given an actual task simply took it for granted or that a student had a cough went to tell the head teacher that head teacher yeah. i'm coughing the teacher said you just want easier exactly. so no i'll give it to you go, go and sit down yeah you understand that kind of flippant attitude is what is bothering parents and again i feel the regulations put in place are more than enough mm -hmm. but it's always about the trust they have to put in place measures where by when a parent goes to the school to drop off their kid the parent looks around and says okay i am satisfied with these measures and it is important i don't think that there should be a situation where the, the on the day the kids are supposed to report they say just go and drop off the kids no. i think that they should open the schools in the states that the kids are going to occupy them for a day or two for parents to assuage themselves of the conditions now they might say okay but then that is bringing the COVID. yeah but without it you might have a lot of parents thinking we'll let our kids stay home and look vivian let's not deceive ourselves to think that oh it is the rich parents who will let their kids stay home we did a vox pop from cantamanto mm -hmm. from other places and the parents then said hey your money there's your mom go mm -hmm. every child is precious to their yeah. parents <laughs> very few parents will allow their kids to become susceptible to something like this and then later on regret it so for this the burden lies on the ministry of education lies on chas lies on all the other agencies involved to make sure that no child goes to school and suffers from the flippant supervision of somebody there mm -hmm. every complaint must be taken seriously every regulation that the ghana education service and the ministry of education has put in place should be enforced rigorously then we know because you see the ministry is saying we will not test for mm -hmm. a lot of parents that was a big check box uh, yeah yeah so they already have doubts on that mm -hmm. they don't they are unaware of the environment they are taking their children into yeah. because you didn't test yeah. and today when we did the show in the morning a lot of the messages were so what if just one kid enters yeah or even a teacher just or... one <laughs> <That's it. laughs> you understand so parents already have that concern the ministry of education and, and co must not play with the supervision it should not be the first week of school or second week for the 12 or so weeks that these kids are going to school every single day must be like the first but day there are reasons for not testing in terms of uh, affordability or whatever we're you can't blame them i mean can't we have a situation or an instance where we get parents and schools to chip in with this no. test and get cheaper, you know, I don't know. No, that, that's I, I feel you know, before, we before Salon comes in <laughs> on this, it depends on where you are. Now, Senegal did something interesting. They were supposed to start school on the 2nd. That was yesterday. Yeah. But they announced it on the 20th of May. So they said, okay, we will just do a random test of teachers mm -hmm. who will go back to school. Just to see, not the students, the teachers. The Positive cases they saw mm. yesterday evening. Makisa says we are not opening school yeah. because he what if that had gone well, the school would have opened. But he just wanted to see where the numbers were. If it were one or two, but the number of reported positive cases they got back immediately they said we'll wait. Mm. Let's not open the schools yet. But that is their strategy, mm -hmm. you know. So we feel and then they didn't go out to test everybody yeah. they just decided to just do random testing ones. and it gave them enough of a picture to say let us postpone our decision but we are confident in what we are doing as our government keeps assuring us they understand the dynamics of the disease they have taken all the measures into account the schools are safe the matipoku Prempe was quite open he says if you do a if you do b if you do c But, I mean, you know, it, it's not like boxes or or blocks. You are you are dealing with human beings who want to interact with people, people who 
uh, I mean, had to leave school immediately because of the situation. They hadn't seen or they've not seen their friends for a long time. You know, even in the general, among the general populace, there is this sense that the situation is not as bad as it used to be and that yeah. things are getting normal. I mean, the reason why people are a bit more relaxed now and they go about their activities not caring so much about the situation at hand. The same thing, and these are adults in, in many cases, the same thing may play out in the schools. So we say we want 20, 30 people, 25 um, SHS people, students in a class when schools reopen. We've not really spoken about what the situation should be in the dormitories. Maybe the dormitories across the, the country of various schools do not have the same sizes. Mm -hmm. But we can have a sense of saying, let's say, you don't need to, maybe uh, not more than, we don't, maybe you need to space out two meters apart, or we don't need more than 10 people to sleep in a room. That is also very, very important. The, the, the point about the, PT, the, the issues the PTAs or the parents are raising, Yes, if you love your child, you, you, you would think about that because you may be doing your utmost best at home, trying to keep your family and your children safe. Somebody may be a bit reckless, and they are all coming to school at the same time, and there is no test as a first means of saving the, the, the people, I mean, mm -hmm. to, to, to get the infected people yeah. out. If that were done, you, you would have a certain assumption or thinking that now everybody who has come to the school I mean, everybody's starting on a yeah. clean plate. Though certain fun. people's uh, uh, viral load wouldn't have reached the point of being picked as infected people, but it, it reduces the risk drastically. Now, we are going to pick free, uh, SHS people final years across the country, and we're going to put them in... in and every school, it, it's, it's an interesting mix because every kind of person is there, from the rich, the poor, the careless, the, the, the serious-minded. Everybody comes into that pot. And they are all to live together. It has its advantages, but in this case, if one child has been careless in the past or whose household has been careless in the past, it puts everybody at mm -hmm. risk. This is different from a church situation where you only to come to church for one hour and you leave. It reduces, the church one reduces the risk drastically. In, in, in looking at the dynamics of factors that uh, influence the spread of uh, uh, maybe a, 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 a pandemic, for example, there is what we call the, the DOTS, the, the, the D-O-T-S. You know, the D, the, the D essentially standing for the duration, uh, uh, the duration for which uh, somebody with an infection could be infectious. O has to do with the opportunities, the opportunity that the, the virus or the infectious organism will have to spread. In this case, the opportunity will be the, the crowding together, the, the you know, all the things you've been asked not to do. So now when you gather people together in a, a place, you increase the opportunity for the transmission of that microorganism, in this case, coronavirus. So getting people together even for longer periods is a risk on its own. And not doing anything in the form of test or testing, I think it's, it's a bit tricky. But again, you have to look at other considerations the cost of it. Yeah. We have about 400,000 or, or, or to be conservative, 300,000 uh, final, final year. year students at the SHS level. Maybe even more at the uh, GHS level, you know, and the university as well. That would be less. We're putting all these people together and we say they should go back to school. When you put all these numbers together, conservatively we may come close to 900,000 or 1 million. Since this thing started, we've not tested up to 220,000. With all the, the things you've said, that we, we've, we are the country that has tested most per in Africa, ex, per capita, etc. We haven't tested up to 200 and even 50,000. We mm -hmm. are somewhere around 220, 230,000. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to test one, about 1 million people you know, within what period, you know. So it, it is quite a difficult situation. So then so, why push it? I mean, why not say just open the universities um, and then do the tests and leave it there? After all, the other West African countries that you have to do what's here, what, they've not lifted the ban on the schools. So yes, why but, push but, it? If you are looking mm -hmm. at the education and then their qualifications and all that, so, we're so, all in the yes. same soup so, 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 so I think this is where, you know, we have given our destinies or given our lives to our leaders. So now we have no option than to trust <laughs> in their judgment and in what measures they have put in place to, to, to help us deal with this. It's a difficult situation. And again, the, the, the question 
that we raised yesterday, I'm not sure the question has been answered, whether parents could say that their children wouldn't go, shouldn't go to school. Mm, it's exactly you do the online. Oh, so, so it's been said you that can you, you, online, you, can, yeah. you can let your children be home yes. mm -hmm. so they study on their yeah, own well and, and, and go and yeah. write the exam. Okay, so that's fine. And I think a lot of parents will go for that option. The PTA again says that at least give us the opportunity of equipping our children with phones mm -hmm. to go to school so that we can be checking up on them every now and then. I don't know what the official response to that is yet, but it, 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 it's, it's a reflection of the anxiety of the parents. The, your child is going to school, you can't visit the child, there is no way of knowing what the child is going through. And Charlie, let's face it, this is a situation where a lot of people are so lax, don't really care about many things. A child could be sick, somebody will pass by and the person wouldn't care. But you, you have seen a lot of students, but for somebody, that's the person's only child. And only God knows how the person is trying to get the child to that level. And you, you, you play careless a bit, and something happens to that child. In fact, the parents will never forgive you. So I'm sure these are some of the considerations that parents will, 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 will be making as, they are, as they've been asked to, to bring their children back to school. I also foresee a situation where a lot of parents who can afford will say that, no, let's be home, study at home, and then try and pass, and then go to school. Okay, we'll see whether people <laughs> will, will send their kids when, yeah, when the that, various when, when, uh, when periods the time come comes. for, yeah. The reopening for tertiary, secondary school, and then the junior but school. But but why do, 21st century, why don't we allow students to, boarding house students, to, to go to school with, with smart devices? You know, I'm not sure about laptops for SS. I don't because know what I'm doing. The way they were abusing you, you are talking of the phones. So yeah, the, I mean, the, the phones and then the laptops. Yes, because the phones they were abusing, you know. How about laptops? Laptops, yeah. uh, I don't know I mean, whether. Maybe they are looking it, at um, you ha bring a laptop, another doesn't bring the implications of that. And really, what, what are you using it to? No, but, if but, you are but, but, but you see, Solo makes a point. I get your point. Today, but today, but today, 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 look, look, today, look, 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 <laughs> if you enter into that space, we we'll leave. You know. <laughs> so you feel that you allow the laptops and, and Sorry, the, I'm, I'm just, the just, advanced phones. Yeah, I'm, I'm just. Uh, they uh, weren't I'm, using I'm just, WhatsApp to yes, do things. Uh, well, and, you know, I, I, no, you, you can. Way, no, you, know. you can decide what kinds of phones. So you, you disable. You that's why the the parents are even saying you let them use yeah, the so, cassava uh, and exactly. the yam phones. So they, they don't have the opportunity to do the Facebooks yeah. and the WhatsApps and those kinds of things. You know. Uh, um, even that one I don't buy. But like I said, you don't buy the, 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 the distractions. Yes. They use. So you, you don't let them use it during real. school time. You, you, you have a place, a time. Why, why would they, they use it? They start, they go to school, wake no, up, get dressed, go and, to and, school. And, and, and because of the really nature really. of the situation, yeah. before you come, because of the nature of the situation we are dealing with, yeah. I'm expecting that when the students go to school, supervision will be key. So you will have teachers supervising preps and all that. School classes hours, I'm not sure. That's any ideal teacher thing. will We've allow any student. To, to, be to, to use on phone the phone. That's the ideal the thing. We've been in phone. this country you know? where students who were not even allowed to have phones in their schools mm -hmm. did videos. Mm -hmm. Do do we want yeah. to go there? Did oh, videos yeah, and you know. So you see, and this was even a rule that you cannot you have, have a phone. Yes, the teachers were it. not able to. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think. But here's the situation where also we are teaching <laughs> IT in those schools without computers. You know? Oh, but that one is a different discussion. And you go to some schools with computer class. They don't even have computer labs. That is a different discussion. No, I mean, for same. such a uh, subject, there must be the lab. No, it's just that I feel for now it's such an essential part of learning that you cannot always look at the cons of it and ignore the pros. Mm -hmm. Okay, because let's be honest, if you pit your average 14 year old hmm. Ghanaian <laughs> senior high school student against an average 14 year old from Asia or somewhere. somewhere. The gap mm -hmm. is significant based That's purely technology. on that. But these are, you expect these two persons to compete mm -hmm. favorably to a certain point. Now, someone will say, oh, well, we went through the same system. It did not disadvantage us. Look, mm -hmm. these days I talk to my 14 year old nephew and I feel disadvantaged. <laughs> So we cannot we cannot keep on saying that, but it's a conversation we must have. But I guess today is not the day to have that conversation. Okay, so you guys feel that we should um, encourage the technology bit. It will help. <laughs> it will speed up the learning. I think saying a no to it, you know, and shutting all doors 
it's not really the way to look at it. We, we can start having a conversation around it. Eventually, mm -hmm. we will have to do something like that. Mm -hmm. For example, the parents are saying, we can't, and, and I can understand that. Your, your child is home. You are taking the child to school into an environment you are not sure about. You can't even visit the child. You know, I'm not sure parents will be, the teachers will be calling you. I don't know how you can get in touch with your child. And the child is sick or something, or the situation is happening. Somebody in the dormitory is, 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 is contracted the, the, the disease or, or the infection. And, I mean, it's the anxiety levels will be huge. If you have a situation where you're able to talk to your children, they're able to explain things to you a bit better, and that mm -hmm. calms your nerves. Maybe we should have a situation where perhaps between uh, 5 and then 6 p.m., certain lines will be made available. If you want to talk to somebody, you can call that line. You know, they call it like we, 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 we've done in the past for mm -hmm. home centers. You, you want to talk to somebody, you call, you give a time, you call again, they go and call that person to come, just within that space. So that in that space, if your call doesn't come to you, and that is it, you've not wasted too much of the time you're supposed to use to learn. I, I think we, should, we have to devise a means of making parents have contact with their children whilst they are in school. But to shut it entirely, I'm sure it will be a bit uh, 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 okay. you know, difficult to take. Okay, let me take a few um, messages, then we can continue. This one says... Um, this is from Alfie in Tema. Mm. He says, please, how are uh, students going to deal with the poor nature of toilet facilities on campus? This one says, um, SHS resuming with final year and second year gold track reporting. This means that half of the population will mm. come back. Minister says that day students should also be made boarders for the period. And this will surely bring boarding houses to full capacity. Mm -hmm. Can social distancing and other protocols work under this condition? I think that, that's a very good point. Yeah. Because, yeah, because that's a very good point. That's a very good point. So if, if, if I have a school, let's say, of uh, maybe 5,000 yeah. final years, and maybe because of the facilities, I'm able to take just about 2,000. Mm -hmm. Now, let's say just about 500 will, 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 will come in being final years. And now the other half will have to join, that certainly increases the population yeah. and, and it puts the social distancing thing. <laughs> and the dormitories, question. most schools don't have so many um, it's, it's boarding packed, facilities. Yeah. So I don't know. Anyway. Well, I'm sure they have a plan. You see, all these questions are born out <laughs> they, of they, one thing, the lack yeah. of trust. Mm -hmm. Because over the years, no, our no, trust no, has we know, we know our infrastructure. Because we know we are what waiting we have. there. Yeah, we, we are <laughs> waiting the schools. We know what we have. So if you tell me, you know, third year, boarding school, they should well, they add, they second. Well, they said they are going to do the things. We'll okay. have faith that they will do it. Then they will come. <laughs> We'll check. So, <laughs> and we are praying that nothing bad happens. That we'll finish yes, and we'll yes, go and yes, because it's nice. people's lives are at stake. Uh, yes. yeah, okay. So this one says, I'm worried um, uh, with regards to the lifting of um, the religious activities. I don't have so much of a problem about the churches. They, are, they, they have a bit of a structure. But the most you say, you are not sure. I don't know. Uh, uh, and then you say they will not observe the social distances at all. The worst aspect is that after prayers, we shake hands and use it to uh, rub our faces. We need serious education in Muslim communities. The elderly people are in danger, and these people are not even willing to observe the protocol. We need more education. I'm sure they are not supposed to do that. Although the, the religion says you have to, you know, rub <laughs> your face. Religion you know when they... Clashes with science. Read, uh, uh, <laughs> the most, that's the Muslim community. But I, I, I'm not I well think, vexed in there. I, I also yeah, don't know. I can't so I don't uh, comment. Uh, I'm saying, no, uh, I can't comment. <laughs> okay, so if no. anybody knows, they can, you they know, can assist, us. assist us with this one. Um, because mm. yesterday there was an issue about the ablution. Mm -hmm. And a yes. number of Muslims sent us messages that so far as when you do the ablution, wherever you are, and you don't uh, make yourself filthy, mm. there are a couple of things. Uh, I, I, some of them, you know, yeah, you are fine. Okay. So that one, so it could be done at home. You can, and, and then, so far as within that period, you you keep to the rules of not you dating, know, that, yourself. dating yourself. You should be fine. And when you do, there's something you can do to make up for okay. that by not necessarily using water. So, but I think even the Ahmadiyya Muslim Mission has said that yeah, though they acknowledge the lifting of the of the the ban or yeah. the restriction that people should should pray at home. Yeah. So I mean, there, there's similar things are happening uh, in the in the churches. Okay. So, yes. This one wants us to bring him up to speed with the situation involving the postgraduate students, the masters, mm -hmm. etc. I want to be clear if they are part of this package. Well, I, I, well, I, I think that for that level, if you are asked back, you would know. Mm -hmm. 
so once he hadn't he hasn't heard from his school <laughs> he's not expected back <laughs> you know because the numbers there are not significant they said final year students okay. so they will find a way of dealing with that situation okay. graduate school numbers are not significant that's why after people have thought they should start from graduate, graduate school, school. Mm -hmm. as you know a breaker then we take it from there because graduate schools a lot of schools can handle this one i'm sure is in response to your phone and your it concerns this person says there are phone booths in every school for calls and it labs for surfing like so there are, there are laptops there are there. Lines in secondary schools <laughs> well Lines. when, when so, i so, was yeah, in secondary school we had them i don't know whether but vodafone has a landline so i don't know what they have okay maybe i don't know i mean if you you're in a school and you have that you can learn but this one says they are this they are okay. sp they are supposed to space what is there. <laughs> Which is cool. Let's it will be cool if they have it. <laughs> this one says the teacher said we are not ready, but the state says they are bringing the students. Remember, teachers are not health workers. Teachers have not been trained on COVID. Nurses and doctors with their knowledge, COVID training and PPEs, gowns and well iron boots are getting infected. The SHS three and two gold coming will fill the classrooms with already 60 to 70 in classrooms i'm they said 25 and um the dormitories will be full as well and there'll be no space for social distancing only from three will be manageable the laptops or phones will all vanish by the following day where would they keep them safe? I don't know. So I understand the, the laptop. Okay, because in essence, there's still a lot of things. Too, okay, right? it means they're stealing. So they're, okay, they're okay, stealing, okay, yeah. okay. We so even have, if you get the phone, it won't work. We are letting a disadvantage this cloud. Yes, we are yes. just picking up the bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. Okay, so the con another concern was with regards to the examination. So um, earlier we spoke to officials from WAEC on uh, the way forward and the issue. Uh, so we'll pull that one in a bit and then we'll listen to what what they said but um today we had um some assemblies going around trying to enforce some of the um, regulations um especially the nose uh, wearing of the nose marks and we're told that quite a lot of people are flouting me I mean, these days when you go out people don't wear it you know so we caught up with uh, a number of uh, assemblies trying to enforce the wearing of nose marks we could quickly um have a b-roll to that effect and then uh, we look at enforcement again it appears we are still struggling with the enforcement guys yes the enforcement is a bit difficult because the penalties are not clear uh, yes, I I, 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 um, I acknowledge the fact that the minister, uh, in exercise of his powers under the Public Health um, Act of 2012, Act 851, uh, you know, has issued an EI, EI 61, which essentially talks about certain actions to protect individuals and protect the public as well. But it appears that it's it's just been left there because. No punishment is being uh, is 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 been attached to it. So the only thing we see is health uh, workers, I mean uh, uh, law enforcers, mm -hmm. trying to uh, make people return to where they came from. When you're traveling, they see you without a mask. They stop you and 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 you return to where you're coming from. We also see in a situation where people have the mask, but they don't wear them. When they see law enforcement yeah. people stopping and checking, then they put it on quickly. I think the education must improve. We need to get to a place where we know that we wear the mask for ourselves. We don't wear the mask because we want to impress law enforcers or we want to enter a shop. You know, it's important. For many of the shops to, I mean, to their credit, they, they, they ensure that you wear the mask before you get in. In fact, some have actually put in designated decks where there is um, hand sanitizers. When you enter, they, 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 they put some in your palm to rub it, you know, uh, before you, you, you enter the shop. That is good. But for some other shops, too, it appears they don't really care. You just enter, and I've entered a few shops like that, mm -hmm. hoping they will stop me or ask me a question. They don't, some don't even and, have and, the Veronica and, and you go about do your thing normally, and then, and, then, and then you come back. We must get to a point where we know that the, or what we realize, that the wearing of the mask is not for somebody. It is for ourselves, and it's for our immediate community. When that realization comes, I think it will be better. And that will only come with improved education. Is this pain or so? When they were easing their restrictions, one of the measures they put in place was that the mask wearing should be compulsory. And if you are caught without it, you are fined 50 euros. So you see, that clearly has a punishment attached to it. Yeah. So if, if I don't want to pay 50 euros, I ensure I wore it. 
I wear it. If you wear it for a certain, I mean, for, for a while, you begin, you may realize that it's important to do. Even if you don't want to wear it, for the fear of being fined, you wear it. And, and these are places where they're able to get you to pay the fine. I, I, I think something like that could be, could, could be good. But again, it must go through the proper process of, of lawmaking. All right. Well, I, I agree with every sentiment that Salom has shared with regards to the community policing of the measures that have been put in place today. We, we, we brought in a story from, uh, I think, the Bono region or so, uh, the, uh, in the AG area, where the authorities were saying they are now going to <laughs> enforce the regulations strictly because they've recorded some cases in the area. You don't have to wait. <laughs> Okay, mm -hmm. the rules are clear, and some of the authorities have just been caught napping. Hmm. People should just be up and doing until we get a vaccine. Every day is a busy day. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you see, it, it links back even back to the school situation. Hmm. Yeah. You see, because these are parts of the bodies that will be used to monitor the schools. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you are not, not able to monitor the market. Hmm. You can't <laughs> monitor the neighborhood, but you're supp you find time to go and monitor yeah. the school hmm. yeah. at what time? But they'll tell you they are under resourced, they are this, they are that. There are just too many excuses in building this up. And <laughs> unfortunately, we, we, are, hmm. we, we, we are hedging a lot on a sudden improvement in attitude. Hmm. There is not much we can do but hope mm -hmm. that it happens. You see, because you can't say, oh, this is how we are. So we won't yeah. be able to do it. Yeah. The evidence on the face of it suggests so. But you also want to believe the best of people mm -hmm. under these circumstances. So I choose to go that way. That suddenly we would have discovered that it is right for us to do these things and do it well. I, I also heard uh, one minister saying communities should get involved in sanitation. Mm. <laughs> now... This is, is an it, everyday thing. Yes, and, and we should have, hmm. there should have been a build up to this gradually. Yes. You know, it doesn't happen suddenly. You must have to keep your community for, for two, three days. <laughs> and because it's not part of us, it will, it will, it will, it will fill up on the way. It will work. Okay. Another challenge we are facing is uh, even though we've placed a ban on um, uh, traveling or coming inside, we're still having challenges stopping people using the other routes. Uh, land routes from coming in. For example, we know that today 18 Bukinabes were arrested in the Upper West region mm. and uh, the Minister of Interior uh, appeared in Parliament trying to reassure that the issue will be dealt with, but uh, we all know how the game is. It's yeah. difficult to do uh, let, me, let me just say this so that said on council. <laughs> for, I, I am in no doubt, for every 18 people we catch, 14 and have more passed than that, yes. More For than every that. 18. You know, and this is not me speculating. I know somebody who somehow in the midst of this ended up in Nigeria. Mm. I don't know how the person ended up in Nigeria. In, in the midst of the border closure. Border closure. Ended well, up in Nigeria. Go out and, and go got, to Nigeria. And go to Nigeria by road. Wow. By road? Yes. Okay, by road. Not by air. Yeah. By road. Yeah. By road. You see? So... And that wow. is what makes it even more serious. <laughs> so as for the borders, it's unfortunate the nature of uh, geography makes it hard. There are so many. In that time I spoke to um, uh, Anabu Mahama Yariga, and he said, for instance, the border between his hometown and Burkina Faso is a river. Mm -hmm. It only becomes a border when the tide is high. Mm -hmm. ah. Or when the river level is high. Let me put it that because there's no tide for the river. Mm -hmm. When the river level is high. Other than that, you just walk through, through it yeah, and you're walking off so and you come back you can't police but that, that's how they live okay mm -hmm. but i must also commend the immigration service that it looks like they are on their alert they've discovered a lot of these unapproved routes they are trying to plug the holes they are arresting a significant number but the problem is there are just too many mm -hmm. of these you plug two they are opening a new one yeah, somewhere one. it is the nature of the geography we can't put a wall or a fence between us yeah, and those yeah. places. Yeah. And, and, and for many of them, they, they were families, and they are still families. They were families before these imaginary lines, I mean, the boundaries were drawn. Mm -hmm. were drawn. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that an imaginary line passes in between, the family ties. And that's
Yeah. Or, or, and vice versa. So it, it's quite a difficult thing. Just if you can imagine this, that I make it to Wadome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I move from Wadome to that village next door. Hmm. So I move from Wadome to Togo. Mm -hmm. I mean, so, so, so arrest me. How will you know? Because <laughs> no, I mean, you, you, you see, you see them on, on both sides. Yeah. But a, a, again, um, so so it's even making our immigration guys spread themselves too thin because there are not many one, uh, and the task is, is very huge. And you see, the, the surprising thing to me is, I wonder how the COVID situation really is on the ground in in our neighboring countries because mm -hmm. it appears every batch of Ill illegal immigrants we arrest, a significant number of them have okay. COVID. So the the, the, the Tamale case, for example, we had ten people. Was it ten it's or fifteen? True. All yeah. of them had COVID. We arrested some Nigerians, yeah. tested them. Yeah. All, all had COVID. COVID. Arrested some Burkinabe, COVID. All some COVID. Nigerians, COVID. COVID. I mean, so I really wonder. These it are randomly <laughs> selected people. So I really wonder how the situation is in those countries. And 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 well, the numbers are also and very good. Uh -huh. yeah. What are the what are the figures we are having? Are actually, a true reflection of what's on the ground. You know, you can't have a situation where you have a very true, true, true reflection of what's on the ground. But we should have, you know, some, you know, a, a, a good a reflection of what's of, on yeah, the ground. Reflection. You know, so it, it it makes me a bit concerned and 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 want to say that we should go hard at this, and ensure that we arrest them or we plug the holes as much as possible. I'm I, I'm hoping that. The statement by the interior minister is it's not one of those you just you just appear in parliament to just make and go to sleep. And in fact, I've not really heard the concrete measures is put in place to ensure that these people don't come through this yeah. illegal route. So we will ensure that you, so, so it will not happen again. I assure you. No, we've heard many of these things too. too <laughs> we've, had it, we've heard them too many times. And I mean, the value of so, those statements. You know, have become very low, and when we hear them, we just take them as political statements, and we, we move on. Meanwhile, the job itself is huge, and and very little has been done about it. Okay, let me take uh, one or two messages. Our time is almost up. This one from uh, Abekanto says, uh, "We don't understand why government is refusing to do the mass testing. Every health worker, or scientist knows it is the way to go. Approved RDT tests are kits. Sorry." Approved RDT kits are already out there, and we'll need to. Do, all we need to do is to import and use without having to calibrate uh, locally. We should get serious. This one says, almost all Muslim communities here in Tamale still don't believe the virus is here, so there's no social distancing in some mosque. Um, the central mosque, this one says, for example, is small, but people here don't follow the mocks and you say your mc must return to tamale to continue his work i don't know where he is well, MC, well, MC is <laughs> MC, MC MC superior uh, 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 superior people are looking oh, for you the people are looking for you so <laughs> guys we have to uh, wrap up here our time is up mm -hmm. um, so we, we hope to see whether the questions around the the phones, the sick, yeah. and all that. And and my uh, your your question yesterday is still pertinent on whether it is compulsory mm -hmm. to send my child my, my child to school. Because they Bernard tried answering that question and saying, well, you can get your child to register. But the point also was somebody sent a, uh, somebody that case last time said once the child is registered to a school in the system, and most of them have been registered, mm -hmm. it becomes quite difficult to change from. You know, to the the registration is already done. Unless they're going to do a re-registration or something. Exactly. So we'll see that one. But when school reopens, we will perhaps see the levels yeah. of parents who will let their kids go back to school. And you can, I mean, students who ask will be asked to wear masks in class and all that, which is great. You can imagine a situation where. Uh, they are sleeping at night because you don't sleep with a mask. <laughs> and the student, I mean, the first student coughs. You know when the cough is started, people, when you cough around, oh, people, they, 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 they run away, you know, so no, I'm you sure. Can't just cough in peace. Yeah. It'll be interesting <laughs> with the students, all these things they will do. But it's, guys, good, it's good, we have yeah. a plan for going back, yeah. it's yeah. good. So keep our eyes on that. Thank you so much for coming. Um, uh, Salom Adonu, Head of Features and Articles here at City FM and City TV and Godfrey uh, Akutobuafo is also the Head of Current Affairs here at City FM and City TV. Thank you also for joining us. My name is Vivian Kai Loko. Goodbye. <laughs>